had a West Coast um, Judaism no, experience. I grew, up, I grew up in Baltimore. And so, have you ever been uh, from like Shabbos or kosher? Well, now I grew up in a kosher house. We had two, we had two separate, separate mm-hmm. plates, and we ate crabs outside. Uh huh. In Maryland, yeah, we raised crabs. Of course. But, you know, I come from a family that I grew, went to an Orthodox Hebrew school. So you never had this moment in your life that you felt like maybe God wants you to keep more laws or something? That never, like, well, a weak I, moment, well, a no, fearful no, moment. No, 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 because I already have so much discipline that it would just make me crazier. Uh-huh. So what I had to learn is not to let discipline define my joy. Because uh-huh, uh-huh. joy is not discipline. Uh, and, and for your brother, how did he... My brother's a completely different person. Completely different nervous system, completely different experience in the world. And he's, he's, I'm not a mystic, I'm a, prag, I'm a pragmatist. He, does he have, he's a mystic. he likes it. He's a mystic. The Rebbe made it possible for people to, to um, approach it. He made it right. an easy way in. Right, right. Yeah. right. And, and you, you know, you need smart teachers. And I went to Chabad when I was an undergrad and just thought it was kind of intellectually weak. For me, for right. me, I needed more in, in the in the campus uh, Chabad house. Yeah, yeah, and I just needed. Which school was it? I was going to seven. It was actually at the Chabad on Daily. Uh, Daily. Seven forty one. Daily. The food was great, but you know, I'm not a Platonist, you know, and so the whole structure of how I, I I'm a deconstructionist, uh-huh. so I like to take things apart, not build structures that are supposed to be idealistic. So, so a lot of Chabad is about creating these ideal icons. And I'm interested in breaking them apart just to find out how they work. So that's the that's the, the kind of architect, mechanical engineer in me, wow. designer in me. Wow. Right? So that's how you enjoyed being Jewish and you didn't get stuck. You continued. Yeah. And... Because and, and the thing I loved about growing up Jewish is we could ask a lot of questions and we could argue. It was so much fun. Right. And there were always there's always somebody smarter than you who knew more. So you hang with them. Right? Hmm. Well, we didn't know what questions to ask when we were kids. And there were well, questions well, we weren't allowed to ask. my big one was, okay, evolution, guys. Right. Like, put, help me understand that. Huh. Because I was going to school and we were learning science. And so most of my career has been about... Where's your little girl? Hmm. Right, right behind me. Has been about um, the science-religion dialogue. That, has, that, has, that really captured most of my intellectual life. And now that I, and particularly after reading Rabbi Sachs and his treatise on how to think about it, he he did solve some issues for me, and now I see that more than ever they have to coexist together, and they have very different jobs. You mean coexist like the religion of Einstein, the feeling of mystery and awe, or, no, or, or no. religion the way you see it on the street? No, no, no. I Well, first of all, I don't think religion... Is at its best is I don't think mysticism. Hello, yes, you want to like get every scent on top of you. Um, <laughs> I, by the way, that's an old wolf behavior. I yeah. Think. Yeah. They what they do is they rub themselves in the grass with the scent that they want to take back to the pack. Uh huh. Oh yeah. So he, I, I I thought it was in my lifetime is how profound what a profound need we have for social integration and social relationship. And community. Community. Um, and I believe that the here and now religions and science that promotes the social relationship are the ones we gravitate towards because that defi- that it speaks to our biology, right? And it speaks to our actual experience growing up in families. And so I would say right now there's such a crisis in. For a community that's connected through the internet, the crisis is having social contact. So why is Reform uh, Judaism losing a lot of people? Because I think it's a good because model. Well, well, it's rational and it's Judaism. Yeah, but that's the, that's the its problem, is that humans are not just rational, and it's rinsed of ritual, it's rinsed of... They need the rituals. Story, ritual and story, which is aesthetics. You remove the aesthetics, you remove the... the the muscle and the juice, right? Wow. So all you have is bone, wow. right? In a body. So um, I'm gonna watch her. Refuge in yeah, Buddhism. yeah. So I, so um, for my generation, I did my. By the way, I did my dissertation on this. Is the options to to look to spiritual path were many, right? And many Jewish people went to Buddhism because Buddhism has so much in common in terms of teachings, the teacher, 
and the community. Mm -hmm. So the structure is very similar. And it's also a very practical philosophy, which is very here and now in mm -hmm. this world. Mm -hmm. And there is, uh, while there is philosophically what people call the stoic or the nihilistic aspect yes. of Buddhism, um, I think what it, what it does speak to is understanding self-inquiry to improve one's moral access. Yeah, right. and, and, and so same similar with the, to Judaism. Yeah, right? well, the so, Talmud and the rabbis would say, like, the golden rules and the, the negative right, of right. what Jesus said was similar. And they would say, like, pick your vote and all that. But um, but the, uh, what I see is that not only what you're, what you're saying is, look, people, Jews taking refuge in Buddhism, I'm saying scientists taking refuge in ortho, in orthodoxy, saying, look, I'm a sci I know a scientist, he doesn't believe in God, and he's an orthodox Jew. Right. He just sees it as a practice. As a practice, and